Nintendo Company, Limited is a Japanese multinational consumer electronics company headquartered in Kyoto, Japan. It was originally founded in 1889 to produce handmade Hanafuda cards. It eventually became one of the most prominent figures in today's video game industry, being the world's largest video game company by revenue. Origin Nintendo started out as a small Japanese business, founded by Fusajiro Yamauchi on September 23, 1889, as Nintendo Copay. Based in Kyoto, Japan, the business produced and marketed Hanafuda cards. The name Nintendo is commonly assumed to mean leave luck to heaven, but there are no historical records to validate this assumption. The cards, which were all handmade, soon began to gain popularity, and Yamauchi had to hire assistants to mass produce cards to keep up with demand. Fusajiro Yamauchi did not have a son to take over the family business. Following common Japanese tradition, he adopted his son in law, Sekirai Yamauchi. In 1929, Yamauchi retired from the company and allowed Sekirai Yamauchi to take over the company as president. In 1933, Sekirai Yamauchi established a joint venture with another company and renamed the company Yamauchi Nintendo and Company. In 1947, Sekirai established the company Mawafuku Company, Ltd., to distribute the Hanafuda cards, as well as several other brands of cards that had been introduced by Nintendo. Sekirai Yamauchi also had only daughters, so again his son-in-law was adopted into the family. Shike Nojo never became president because he left his family. Subsequently, his son Hiroshi was brought up by his grandparents. Hiroshi later took over the company instead of his father. 1889 a Euro 1956, as a card company. Hiroshi Yamauchi attended Waseda University in Tokyo. However, after his grandfather died in 1949 he took office as the president of Nintendo. He renamed Yamauchi Nintendo and Company to Nintendo Playing Card Company, Limited and in 1951 he renamed their distribution company from Mawafuku Company, Ltd., to Nintendo Character Company, Ltd. In 1953, Nintendo became the first company in Japan to produce playing cards from plastic. This was a huge hit and allowed Nintendo to dominate the card market. In 1956, Hiroshi Yamauchi visited the U.S. to engage in talks with the United States Playing Card Company, the dominant playing card manufacturer in the United States. Yamauchi was shocked to find that the world's biggest company in his business was relegated to using a small office. This was a turning point for Yamauchi, who then realized the limitations of the playing card business. In 1959, Nintendo struck a deal with Disney to have them allow Nintendo to use Disney's characters on Nintendo's playing cards. Previously, Western playing cards were regarded as something similar to Hanafuda and Mahjong, a device for gambling. By tying playing cards to Disney and selling books explaining the different games one could play with the cards, Nintendo could sell the product to Japanese households. The tie-in was a success and the company sold at least 600,000 card packs in a single year. Due to this success, in 1962, Yamauchi took Nintendo public listing the company in Osaka Stock Exchange Second Division. Following the aforementioned success, in 1963 Nintendo Playing Card Company, Ltd. was renamed to Nintendo Company, Ltd. by Hiroshi. Nintendo now began to experiment in other areas of business using the newly injected capital. During the period of time between 1963 and 1968, Nintendo set up a taxi company, Love Hotel Chain, food company and several other things. All these ventures eventually failed, except toy making, where they had some earlier experience from selling playing cards. In 1964, while Japan was experiencing an economic boom due to the Tokyo Olympics, the playing card business reached its saturation point. Japanese households stopped buying playing cards, and the price of Nintendo stock fell from 900 yen to 60 yen. In 1965, Nintendo hired Gunpei Yokoi as a maintenance engineer for the assembly line. However, Yokoi soon became famous for much more than his ability to repair conveyor belts. 1956 a Euro 1972, 
Toy Company and New Ventures, riddled with debt, Nintendo struggled to survive in the Japanese toy industry. It was still small at this point, and dominated by already well-established companies such as Bandai and Tomy. Because of the generally short product life cycle of toys, the company always had to come up with new products. This was the beginning of a major new era for Nintendo. In 1966, Hiroshi Yamauchi was observing a Hanafuda factory. He noticed an extending arm, which was made by one of their maintenance engineers, Gunpei Yokoi, for his own amusement. Yamauchi ordered Yokoi to develop it as a proper product for the Christmas rush. Released as the Ultra Hand, it would become one of Nintendo's earliest toy blockbusters, selling over a million units. Seeing that Yokoi had promise, Hiroshi Yamauchi pulled him off assembly line work. Yokoi was soon moved from maintenance duty to product development. Due to his electrical engineering background, it soon became apparent that Gunpei was quite adept at developing electronic toys. These devices had a much higher novelty value than traditional toys, allowing Nintendo to charge a higher price margin for each product. Yokoi went on to develop many other toys, including the 10 billion barrel puzzle, a baseball throwing machine called the Ultra Machine and a love tester. Another invention of his, in collaboration with Masayuki Wemura from Sharp, was the Nintendo Beam Gun game, the precursor to the NES Zapper. Nintendo released the first solar-powered light gun, the Nintendo Beam Gun, in 1970. This was the first commercially available light gun for home use, produced in partnership with Sharp. In 1972, Nintendo released the Eel Conga, one of the first programmable drum machines. It could play pre-programmed rhythms from disc-shaped punch cards, which could be altered or programmed by the user, to play different patterns. 1. 1972-present, Electronic Games, in 1972, the first commercially available video game console, the Magnavox Odyssey, had a light gun accessory, the shooting gallery. This was the first involvement of Nintendo in video games. According to Martin Picard in the International Journal of Computer Game Research, in 1971, Nintendo had, even before the marketing of the first home console in the United States, an alliance with the American pioneer Magnavox to develop and produce optoelectronic guns for the Odyssey, since it was similar to what Nintendo was able to offer in the Japanese toy market in 1970s. In 1973, its focus shifted to family entertainment venues with the laser clay shooting system, using the same light gun technology used in Nintendo's Kaozenjur series of toys, and set up in abandoned bowling alleys. Following some success, Nintendo developed several more light gun machines for the emerging arcade scene. While the laser clay shooting system ranges had to be shut down following excessive costs, Nintendo had found a new market. In 1974, Nintendo secured the rights to distribute the Magnavox Odyssey video game console in Japan. Color TV Game Nintendo at this time saw how successful video games were and began to dabble in them. Their first step in that field was to secure the rights to distribute the Magnavox Odyssey in Japan, which they did in 1975. At the time, Home video game consoles were extremely rare a Euro even the seminal Atari Pong console had yet to be produced. After experiencing reasonable success at this, Nintendo began developing its own video games, both for the home and for arcades. In the 1970s, Mitsubishi Electric proposed joint development of Color TV Game Machine. In 1977, they released Color TV Game 6, and Color TV Game 15. Their first video arcade game was 1975's Evia Race. A large handful of others followed in the next several years, Radar Scope and Donkey Kong being among the most famous of these. The early 1980s saw Nintendo's video game division creating some of its most famous arcade titles. The massively popular Donkey Kong was created in 1981, with Miyamoto as its mastermind, and released in the arcades and on the Atari 2600. Intellivision, and Coleco Vision video game systems. This release method would be used on several later Nintendo arcade games of this same period, including the original Mario Bros. In addition to this arcade and dedicated console game activity, 
Nintendo was testing the consumer handheld video game Waters with a Game & Watch. Game & Watch and Nintendo Entertainment System Game & Watch or G&W is a line of handheld electronic games produced by Nintendo from 1980 to 1991. Created by game designer Gunpei Yokoi, each Game & Watch features a single game to be played on an LCD screen in addition to a clock and or an alarm. It was the earliest Nintendo product to garner major success. 2. The device was known as Trickatronic in Germany. It was a handheld electronic game that was second generation. There were 43.4 million units sold worldwide. Its games were pre-installed software. In 1982 Nintendo developed a prototype system dubbed the Advanced Video System, and had controllers much like the NES. There were accessories such as a tape drive, a joystick and a light gun, and along with all of that, the system was made of a computer, much like the Atari 400, Commodore VIC-20 and Commodore 64. It was never released and is on display at the Nintendo shop. In July 1983, Nintendo released their Famicom system in Japan, which was their first attempt at a cartridge-based video game console. The system sold over 500,000 units within two months at a price around $100 USD. However, after a few months of favorable sales, Nintendo received complaints that some Famicom consoles would freeze when the player attempted to play certain games. The fault was found in a malfunctioning chip and Nintendo decided to recall all Famicom units that were currently on store shelves, which ultimately cost them approximately half a million USD. During this period, Nintendo rekindled their desire to release the Famicom in the U.S. Since the company had very little experience with the U.S. market, they had previously attempted to contract with Atari for the system's distribution in 1983. However, a fiasco involving Coleco and Donkey Kong soured the relationship between the two during the negotiations, and Atari refused to back Nintendo's console. The video game crash of 1983 soon took out not only Atari, but the vast majority of the American market itself. Nintendo was on their own. Nintendo was determined not to make the same mistakes in the US that Atari had. Because of massive influxes of games that were regarded as some of the worst ever created, gaming had almost completely died out in America. Nintendo decided that to avoid facing the same problems, they would only allow games that received their seal of quality to be sold for the Famicom. In 1985, Nintendo announced that they were releasing the Famicom worldwide with a different design under the name the Nintendo Entertainment System. They used a creative tactic to counter the bad view that the media was giving on video games, and released the NES with ROB units that connected to the console and were synchronized to the games. To ensure the localization of the highest quality games by third-party developers, Nintendo of America limited the number of game titles third-party developers could release in a single year to five. Konami, the first third-party company that was allowed to make cartridges for the Famicom, would later circumvent this rule by creating a spin-off company, Ultra Games, to release additional games in a single year. Other manufacturers soon employed the same tactic. Also in 1985, Super Mario Bros. was released for the Famicom in Japan and became a large success. Nintendo Test marketed the Nintendo Entertainment System in the New York area on October 18, 1985. They expanded the test to Los Angeles in February 1986, followed by tests in Chicago and San Francisco. They would go national by the end of 1986, along with 15 games, sold separately. In the US and Canada, it outsold its competitors by a wide margin. This was also the year the Metroid and Super Mario Bros. 2 were released. In 1987, The Legend of Zelda was released to much critical acclaim. In 1988, Nintendo of America unveiled Nintendo Power, a monthly news and strategy magazine from Nintendo that served to advertise new games. The first issue published was the July-August edition which spotlighted the NES game Super Mario Bros. 2. Nintendo Power has since ceased publication with its December 2012 edition. Game Boy and Super Nintendo Entertainment System In 1989, Nintendo released the Game Boy, 
along with the accompanying game Tetris. Due to the price, the game and its durability, the Game Boy sold extremely well. It eventually became the best-selling portable game system of all time. Later, Super Mario Land was also released for the Game Boy, which sold 14 million copies worldwide. 1989 was also the year that Nintendo announced a sequel to the Famicom, to be called the Super Famicom. Also, in 1989, Nintendo came out with the Nintendo Serial System which had shapes from the game Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. The last major blockbuster game for the NES, Super Mario Bros. 3, was released in early 1990. The game went on to sell over 18 million units and is widely considered by fans and critics alike to be perhaps the greatest 8-bit game ever made. It was followed by a licensed television adaption named the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, which was released by DIC Entertainment and Viacom Enterprises in that year to capitalize on the game's immense popularity. The Super Famicom was released in Japan on November 21, 1990. The system's launch was widely successful, and the Super Famicom was sold out across Japan within three days. In August 1991, the Super Famicom was launched in the U.S. under the name Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The SNES was released in Europe in 1992. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System followed in the steps of its predecessor, with high technical specifications for its era. The controller of the SNES had also improved over that of the NES, as it now had rounded edges and four new buttons, a standard which is evident on many modern controllers today. Nintendo had also begun development on a CD-ROM attachment for the SNES Super Famicom. Their first partner in this project was Sony, whom Nintendo had worked with before to provide the SNES with its SPC sound chip. Development on the Nintendo PlayStation CD Ramadon and SNES SFC standalone hybrid console began. However, at the last minute Nintendo decided to pull out of the partnership and instead go with Philips, and while no CD Ramadon was produced, several Nintendo properties appeared on the Philips CDI media console. Upon learning this, Sony decided to continue developing the technology they had into the PlayStation. The exact reason Nintendo left its partnership with Sony has been the subject of speculation over the years, but the most common theory is that Sony either wanted too much of the profits for the machine or the rights to the CD-ROM attachment itself. In Japan, the Super Famicom easily took control of the gaming market. In the US, due to a late start and an aggressive marketing campaign by Sega, Nintendo saw its market share take a precipitous plunge from 90 to 95 percent with the NES to a low of approximately 35 percent against the Sega Genesis. Over the course of several years, the SNES in North America eventually overtook the Genesis, thanks to franchise titles such as Super Mario World, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Street Fighter II, and the Final Fantasy series. Total worldwide sales of the SNES were higher than the Genesis. As the SNES battled the Sega Genesis, Nintendo was running into problems on another front caused by their own aggressive marketing behavior. In 1991, Nintendo agreed to a settlement regarding price-fixing allegations brought by the Federal Trade Commission and Attorneys General in New York and Maryland. Nintendo had been accused of threatening to cut off shipments of the NES to retailers who discounted the price of the system. The estimated cost of the settlement was just under $30 million. In 1992, Gunpei Yokoi and the rest of R&D1 began planning on a new virtual reality console to be called the Virtual Boy. Hiroshi Yamauchi also bought majority shares of the Seattle Mariners in 1992. In 1993, Nintendo announced plans to develop a new 64-bit console codenamed Project Reality that would be capable of rendering fully 3D environments and characters. In 1994, Nintendo also claimed that Project Reality would be renamed Ultra 64 in the US. The Ultra 64 moniker was unveiled in arcades on the Nintendo-branded fighting game Killer Instinct in the racing game Cruise in USA. Killer Instinct was later released on the SNES. Soon after, Nintendo realized they had mistakenly chosen a name for their new console that the Konami Corporation owned the rights to. Specifically, 
only Konami would have the rights to release games for the new system called Ultra Football, Ultra Tennis, etc. Therefore, in 1995 Nintendo changed the final name of the system to the Nintendo 64, and announced that it would be released in 1996. They later showed previews of the system and several games, including Super Mario 64, to the media and public. 1995 is also the year that Nintendo purchased part of Rare. In 1994, after many years of Nintendo's products being distributed in Australia by Mattel since the NES in 1985, Nintendo Company, Limited opened its Australian headquarters and its first managing directors were Graham Kerry, who moved along from Mattel Australia as managing director and Susie Mutanakra of Nintendo UK Limited. In 1995, Nintendo released the Virtual Boy in Japan. The console sold poorly, but Nintendo still said they had hope for it and continued to release several other games and attempted a release in the US, which was another disaster. Also in 1995, Nintendo found themselves in a competitive situation. Competitor Sega introduced their 32-bit Saturn, while newcomer Sony introduced the 32-bit PlayStation. Sony's fierce marketing campaigns ensued, and it started to cut into Nintendo and Sega's market share. Nintendo 64 and Game Boy Color On June 23, 1996, the Nintendo 64 was released in Japan and became a huge hit, selling over 500,000 units on the first day of its release. On September 29, 1996, Nintendo released the Nintendo 64 in North America, and it too was a success. Many feel that the advertising onslaught by Sony at this time did not truly begin to take effect until many of the consumers who held out for the N64 became frustrated at the lack of software following the first few months after the system's release. What also greatly contributed to the extremely competitive climate that Nintendo was entrenched in was the fact that many third-party companies immediately began developing and releasing many of their leading games for Nintendo's competing consoles. Many of those third-party companies cited cheaper development and manufacturing costs for the CD format, versus the cartridge format. On December 1, 1999, Nintendo released an add-on to the Nintendo 64 in Japan, titled the Nintendo 64 DD, although it was never released elsewhere. Nintendo followed with the release of the Game Boy Pocket, a smaller version of the original Game Boy, designed by Gunpei Yokoi as a parting gift. A week after the release of the Game Boy Pocket, Gunpei resigned from his position at Nintendo. Gunpei helped in the creation of a competitor system named the Wonder Swan, using the skills he gained in the creation of the Game Boy. In 1996, Pocket Monsters was released in Japan to a huge following. The poker copyright mon franchise, created by Satoshi Tadiri, was proving so popular in America, Europe, and Japan, that for a brief time, Nintendo took back their place as the supreme power in the games industry. In 1997, Game Boy creator Gunpei Yokoi died in a car accident at the age of 56. On October 13, 1998, the Game Boy Color was released in Japan, with releases in North America and Europe a month later. Game Boy Advance and Nintendo GameCube Nintendo released the Game Boy Advance in Japan on March 21, 2001, followed by the North American launch on June 11 and the European launch on June 22. Nintendo released the Nintendo GameCube home video game console on September 14, 2001, in Japan. It was released in North America on November 18, 2001, Europe on May 3, 2002, and Australia on May 17, 2002. In 2002, Hiroshi Yamauchi stepped down as the president of Nintendo and named Satoru Iwata his successor. Nintendo and Chinese-American scientist Dr. Wei Yen co-founded IK to manufacture and distribute official Nintendo consoles and games for the mainland Chinese market under the IK brand. During the same year, Nintendo's aggressive business tactics in Europe would catch up to them. The European Commission determined that Nintendo had engaged in anti-competitive price-fixing business practices dating at least as far back as the early 1990s. This resulted in a heavy fine being laid against the company 149 million, 
one of the largest antitrust fines applied in the history of the Commission. Nintendo DS and Wii In May 2004, Nintendo announced plans to release a new brand of handheld, unrelated to the Game Boy, featuring two screens, one of which was touch-sensitive. The Nintendo DS, released on November 21, 2004, received over 3 million pre-orders. In addition to the touchscreen, the DS can also create three-dimensional graphics, similar to those of the Nintendo 64, although its lack of hardware support for texture filtering results in more pixelated graphics than on the Nintendo 64. President Satoru Iwata reassigned all of Nintendo's software designers under new managers and different division. Most of the resources were allocated to Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka and the Nintendo EAD department. On May 14, 2005, Nintendo opened its first retail store accessible to the general public, Nintendo World Store, at the Rockefeller Center in New York City. It consists of two stories, and contains many kiosks of GameCube, Game Boy Advance, and Nintendo DS games. There are also display cases filled with things from Nintendo's past, including Hannah Feud the playing cards, Nintendo's first product. They celebrated the opening with a block party at Rockefeller Plaza. At E3 in May 2005, Nintendo displayed the first prototype for their next-generation system, codenamed the Nintendo Revolution, its controller revealed at the Tokyo Game Show later that year. On January 26, 2006, Nintendo announced a new version of their Nintendo DS handheld, the Nintendo DS Lite, designed to be smaller and lighter, with a brighter screen. It was launched in Japan on March 2, 2006. On May 25, 2006, Reggie Phil's aim was promoted to president and COO of Nintendo of America, Inc. The former president, Tozumi Kamichima, was promoted to chairman of the board and CEO. On June 11, 2006, Nintendo released their update to the Nintendo DS, the Nintendo DS Lite, in North America. Also on this day Nintendo opened its official U.S. press site to the public which continued until June 17, 2006. On June 23, 2006, Nintendo released the Nintendo DS Lite in Europe. On July 7, 2006, Nintendo officially established a South Korean subsidiary, Nintendo Korea, in the country's capital, Seoul which replaced Day One Media as the official distributor of Nintendo products in South Korea. In early August 2006, it was revealed that the Nintendo Corporation was the target of a patent infringement lawsuit. Leveled by the Anascape Corporation, the suit claims that Nintendo's use of analog technology in their remote game controllers constitutes a violation of their patents. Microsoft is also named in the lawsuit, for the same reasons. The lawsuit seeks to bring damages to both corporations and possibly force them to stop selling controllers with a violating technology. In mid-September 2006, during press conferences held in Tokyo, New York, and London on 13, 14, and 15 September, respectively, Nintendo announced launch details for its Wii console, as well as demonstrated features of the Wii menu GUI. The retail price was going for $249 US and was released on November 19, 2006. The console sold fast and was a big breakthrough for Nintendo, picking up the pace lost from their last console, the Nintendo GameCube. The Wii was released in Europe at a $249. The reason for the success of the Wii has usually been attributed to the intended market of the product. While at the time most competitors were focusing on more adult and fan-based games, Nintendo decided to release a console for a larger demographic, one including casual gamers, children and those that wouldn't ordinarily play video games. Since no other major gaming console was marketing for this image, these other companies were caught mostly unprepared by the major success of the Wii system, and it wasn't until 2010 that the PlayStation and XBOX released consoles opting for the same image as the Nintendo Wii. On September 17, 2007, Nintendo of America closed its official forums, the NSIDER forums, indefinitely due to a major overhaul of their site. For months prior, 
cutbacks in Nintendo of America's online department led to the trimming back of NSIDER's chat hours and the replacement of their annual Camp Hyrule event a Euro held during August a Euro with a sweepstakes. In the meantime, Nintendo encouraged fans to run their own forums. In response to this, some members of the NSIDER forums created a couple of online communities. The most notable replacement communities are NSIDER 2, created two days after the closure and arguably the largest Nintendo-based community on the web, and Ciderforums.org, formed the same day of the closure, which has merged with other forums into what is now called NSFCD. Nintendo Europe's forum section of their site was also officially closed down a week later due to a site revamp, however it had been offline citing security issues since June of that year. On December 19, 2007, Nintendo opened new technical support forums, but discussion is now limited to technical support. In October 2007, Nintendo Company, Limited announced Nintendo Australia's new managing director, Rose Lapin. She is Nintendo's first female head of one of its subsidiaries and worked for Nintendo before it started in Australia as director of sales and marketing for Metal and had that role until she was announced managing director. On November 1, 2008, Nintendo Company, Limited released an updated version of the Nintendo DS Lite in Japan. The Nintendo Tsai. It includes all features of the Nintendo DS Lite, but it includes a camera on the inside and outside of the system and newer features. It is the first handheld game system manufactured by Nintendo that allows downloadable gaming content to the system. The Nintendo Tsai was released April 2, 2009, in Australia and Asia, April 3, 2009, in Europe, and April 5, 2009, in North America. Nintendo 3DS and Wii U On February 26, 2011, the Nintendo 3DS was released in Japan. It was released on March 25th and 27th to Europe and the US, respectively. The 3DS was part of a large wave of 3D technologies being released at the time. Unlike most of these, the 3DS did not use 3D glasses for its 3D effect, and instead used parallax barrier autostereoscopy. On April 25, 2011, Nintendo confirmed that they were making a new console to be released in 2012. On June 7, 2011, the console was announced as being named the Wii U. The Wii U is critically acclaimed as Nintendo's first console to be able to play video games in 1080p HD. During the Electronics Entertainment Expo in 2011, Nintendo's press conference put a great amount of stress on the abilities and innovations of the new controller, a unit resembling a tablet. Many gamers were confused after the press conference about whether the Wii U is an entirely new system or just a new controller for the Wii. The Wii U was, however, a whole new home console system developed by Nintendo. The system was released on November 18, 2012 in North America, November 30, 2012 in Europe and Australia, and on December 8, 2012 in Japan. It featured a new controller with a 6.2-inch touchscreen, two thumb pads, four shoulder buttons, a directional pad, and four lettered buttons. It also featured an accelerometer, gyroscope, camera, near-field communications, and built-in microphone, similar those in the Nintendo 3DS. References Further reading, Chef, David. Game Over, How Nintendo Zapped an American Industry, Captured Your Dollars, and Enslaved Your Children. New York, New York, Random House. ISBN A 0 7881 5 Gorges, Florent. Izo Yamazaki. The History of Nintendo, 1889-1980 From Playing Cards to Game and Watch. Paris, France, Pix and Love Publishing. ISBN A2-918272-15-9A, external links, History of Nintendo article at Gummy Player.